Welcome once again to our show. Uh, thank you for watching. On my right, I have my co-host, uh, Nisa Paraitza, uh, local area media personality. Uh, thank you, Anissa, for being on our show again. Thank you for having me. And we have a guest, no stranger to our show, a friend of our shows and our organization, Pat Girondi, uh, who's a uh, local uh, kind of Horatio Algiers, rags to riches, uh, a self-made businessman. And we're here to update you from the last show. Some of you may have seen his last show. And uh, very briefly, uh, uh, Pat, tell us a little bit about your son and about um, the disease and what you've been doing to try to help other kids that are in that situation. Uh, basically, my son, uh, Rocco, was diagnosed with uh, thalassemia, a very rare blood disease, uh, of which there's really no cure, uh, 16 and a half years ago. In 16 and a half years, I've been uh, working to cure him. Okay. Now, uh, we were t talking about a firm you've started, and you both have a for-profit business firm as well as a non-for-profit, and we should put a plug that the music we heard at the beginning and the music on the last show, and we can find that show on Google Video. It also played on uh, Cable Access Network on either channels 19 or 21, is Orphan's Hope, and I'm putting it up here. And we also got it on the screen, and you got a bunch of different songs here. You have some very good music. You also have a MySpace page, and you're one of my friends on MySpace. Uh, and... Um, uh, so if anybody goes on MySpace, are you on Facebook or any other? Uh, MySpace.com uh, slash Pat I think I'm on Facebook, but I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, so MySpace.com slash Pat and this helps um, uh, non-for-profit, and it's called Orphan's Hope. Now, why did you call it Orphan's Hope? Uh, there's three CDs. This is the third one. The first one was Orphan's Soul. The second one was Orphan's Journey. This is Orphan's Hope. <laughs> <clears throat> and Orphan's Hope actually coincides with the clinical trials that we're going to begin. We're announcing on Thursday in New York at Sloan Kettering. Okay, now let's talk about that. Thursday, which is uh, February 5th, we have these announcements of your clinical trials. You're involved with some other big corporations. Tell us what's happening February 5th, why that's so important, why that's so groundbreaking. Yeah, I mean, um, February 5th, uh, we'll announce clinical trials, um, gene therapy for clinical trials and gene therapy for the uh, for a major disease the first time ever uh, in the world uh, there'll be representatives from Singapore and Greece and Italy all over the United States uh, that will be there um, and it's uh, it's actually kind of earth-shaking not only for thalassemia which is my son's disease but also for sickle cell anemia Parkinson's disease Alzheimer's disease disease and, and basically all uh, genetic diseases um, in the future will be able to be treated in that way in the way that we're going to treat thalassemia and Pat, on the cover of Time, we have uh, the February 9th issue here. They have um, a whole spread dedicated talking about diseases that are related to stem cell research. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. I mean, um, when we talk about gene therapy and stem cell uh, therapy, they're, they're not always one and the same, but usually are. So mm -hmm. our, our patients, basically, we will uh, take the gene, which is called the beta globin gene, which is the invention of Sloan Kettering, and get it into the patient's stem cell. It'll go back into the patient at autologous bone marrow transplant, much the way they did it in France when they uh, treated patients with SCID, the boy in the bubble disease, and the patient is basically cured. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the science. Since I'm a lawyer, I don't want to pretend to be a scientist, scientist or a doctor. But so you take these, um, you, you take what they've invented. Now, how did they invent it? What is the process of bringing the process of what they're putting into the stem cells? Right. I mean, 19 years ago, basically, Michelle Settlin started working on building the beta globin gene, which is what the thalassemia patient needs. Um, they use natural products so that it's the exact same gene that all of us have in our bodies today. Okay. So this is really what they're talking about when they talk about gene therapy. Yes. Okay. Now, is it gene replacement? Uh, it, I mean, you could consider a gene replacement. Okay. So then it's injected, I'm assuming, by um, some kind of needle into the... Well, there's basically an incubation. What happens is that the gene is placed into what's called a vector. Um, we use the, um, uh, we use the uh, lentivirus vector. There are a bunch of different vectors. There's the lengthy virus vector and the retrovirus vector, adenal virus vector. Again, you said you're you're an attorney, you're not a scientist, and like I said before, you know I didn't get out of school. I didn't graduate from high school. So, but we use the lengthy virus vector, and we get the gene into the lengthy virus vector, and then we incubate it with the patient's stem cells, his own stem cells. Oh, go ahead. Go we on. use Busulfin, um, six milligrams to kilogram to make space in the patient's bone marrow, and then we give him basically a transfusion. So we're giving him an autologous 
a bone marrow transplant. So for, from beginning to end, uh, how long is that process? How many weeks or months? Yeah, I mean, um, six days. Six days. So that's really fast. And we expect to see uh, uh, a response within 40 to 50 days. Now, we were talking about stem cell, and that's the cover of time. But actually, it seems that even in a more conservative view of stem cell research, that anybody could accept this type of therapy because you're not using um, separately harvest human uh, uh, stem cells. You're yes, using it has nothing to do with it. We're okay. using the patient's own stem cells, which is, you know, uh, a big advantage uh, because there's no possibility of rejection. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not only is there no possibility of rejection, but any moral concerns or ethical concerns or legal concerns, depending on where people live, um, there are, this is not the same as what we're thinking of, of taking um, uh, dead baby stem mm -hmm. cells or yeah, harvesting human stem cells. Or I'm glad you that. mentioned that. You know, Frank, there's a lot of confusion, you know, about that. To be quite honest, I've been accused many times of being uh, unethical uh, because we're doing this <laughs> uh, stem cell therapy. But in fact, it's exactly what you're saying. We use the patient's own stem cells. So it's the stem cell mm -hmm. therapy that would be accepted by everybody and anybody. This is consensus stem cell therapy. I would hope so. Right. Well, I mean, in lieu of that there's stem cell therapy that has been banned in the United States or stem cell therapy that is considered unethical um, by, by certain people in certain countries. Yes. That this would be accepted, that this is legal, um, that this is not what people are thinking of uh, and a negative connotation of stem cell therapy. Yes, Frank. Okay. And so how many people could this possibly help? I mean, thousands? What, what kind of disease? There are a million thalassemic patients in the world. It's the world's largest hemoglobin apathy. And as soon as um, we uh, dose this first patients in thalassemia, <laughs> we're going to start sickle cell anemia. It's neat yeah. about sickle cell anemia because they're cousin diseases. Mm -hmm. Asians and uh, Arabs, like southern Italians and Greeks, get thalassemia. Um, Africans get sickle cell anemia, but they're basically both hemoglobin apathies and they're causing diseases. So uh, I was at St. Jude recently, actually I think like December 19th and 20th. Well, let me break in. Um, Sorry. Uh, you, you were at St. Jude, and what I want to do is talk about St. Jude's involvement. Perhaps that's where you're going, but I wanted to make sure we preface it. St. Jude being the, the great organization that deals with uh, you know childhood diseases, especially childhood cancer. Uh, the probably most famous face is uh, Danny Thomas. Yes. Um, they have great big fundraisers, and it's a great organization. Wonderful organization. And um, tell us about how you got connected to St. Jude, what St. Jude's doing, and now how they're on board. Sure. Uh, the community, the uh, gene therapy community or the genetic community is, is a small community. I mean, uh, they're all over the world. And as I said, on uh, Thursday, we'll have people in from Singapore and Greece. And, um, but I have been uh, dealing with a uh, Professor Derek Persons at St. Jude for probably... 10 years at least. Um, I'm one of those guys that when there's something wrong or I don't understand something or I think I need a favor, um, I don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call anyone. And of course, when someone needs a favor or something, you know, I don't hesitate to help them. And I think that's a very unique situation of Aaron Gene Therapeutics is basically me as the CEO. Um, I have a real personal contact with these researchers all over the world. And um, many times it's been verified that the personal touch is really something that saves people's lives. We, we've done that. Um, but Derek, Derek Persons I've known for, I'm going to guess, 10 years. And uh, Derek is their top guy in gene therapy or one of their top guys in gene therapy. And uh, they're working as well in the vector, the lentivirus vector. And so uh, we made a deal, basically, that um, we'll collaborate on thalassemia and uh, sickle cell anemia. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the scientific aspect, not from the details, but who are some of the scientists? You, we were talking some big companies. You told me that you had some top-notch scientists. You told me at the comp or at, on, two, on Thursday you're going to have people from Singapore, which has been at the cutting edge of stem cell research, yes. uh, Greece, uh, the United Italy, States, sure. Italy, mm -hmm. everywhere. So tell us a little bit about who some of the players are. Sure. Michelle Settlin, in my opinion, is a, is a uh, researcher. Has been, his name has been talked about for the Nobel Peace Prize. He's a researcher. Um, he's a French origin, uh, but he works at Sloan Kettering for 10 years or, or more uh, in New York. Uh, there's him, Isabelle Riviere, who's another French researcher at Sloan Kettering. Uh, there's George Stamenopoulos at Washington State, who's incredible. Um, there's Aurelio Maggio, there's Franco Locatelli, I mean, there's just, there's just so many. Chris Ballas, Derek Persons that we were talking about. 
there's a lot of good people. And the neat thing about them is they're young people, um, very aggressive people. Okay. And very, very honest, which is and these are not always easy to find in research. By these the are way. A geneticists, bio biochemists, yes. thing, you know, PhDs. Yes, yes all in re in the same camp. All right, let's take it now. Let's take it down a level to the human level. Um, you've told us a little about your son, and um, unfortunately, he might have a very short life expectancy. Every day is a gift. Uh, you, you know, you've shared that with us. Um, but tell us not only about your son, but some of the family. So we know about the bigger level, that there's billions of dollars in the stem cell industry, that there's millions of people that are affected, that you have these scientists, you have drug companies. Um, but tell us a little bit about your personal story with your son, um, his story, as well as uh, any other family. Because remember the last show we did, there was a comment of, I think, somebody from India that saw the show, and they commented, I think, because their child has this rare genetic disease. Sure. I mean... Oh, uh, Rocco for me is my oldest son out of three. Um, he, I was raised without a father. Uh, my grandfather helped raise me, and my grandfather's name was Rocco. Uh, when he was born, it kind of, um, you know, it kind of finished the circle again. The circle was broken and was kind of fixed. Um, we live in Italy for the most part, or most of the time. That was uh, by choice, and also because uh, we were doing experimental medicine in the United States that we no longer could do in the United States, and. So it, it, it permanently made us your uh, Italian citizens, let's put it that way. But um, Rocco is now 18 years old. Uh, the average life expectancy is 27, even though many of the patients now can live into their 30s. When there's good care, they can live to be 40 years old even. There are, there are instances of thalassemic women who have had children. Um, but the fact of the matter is they go in every 20 days, 14 days, 20 days, 15 days to transfuse. And, you know, nobody wants to sit around and wait for the next AIDS or the Chagas or whatever it is to come. These patients are constantly doing iron chelation. Many of them are still on pumps 12 hours a day. Um, none of them can, or, or very few of them can hold really um, uh, meaningful, how can we say it, full-time jobs, etc., because your boss isn't going to put up with you missing two, three, four, five days a week uh, in the hospital. But um, there are a million patients, and a lot of the patients, especially in India, Pakistan, I get a lot of letters from them. They're all very concerned about the cost. And initially, the cost will be the cost of a bone marrow transplant. I mean, mm -hmm. we're How talking hundreds there? of thousands of dollars. Okay. Um, but I tell all of the patients that write to me, I said, look, I'm sending you back this email. Print it out. Because Pacharandi promises that he'll do everything he can do to make sure your kid gets the therapy, no matter what it costs. So there's no doubt about it that um, I'm not in this to to make a killing, even though, f quite frankly, it, it takes millions and millions to do gene research, and, and uh, I, I'm going to dedicate my life to find this money to do this. Mm -hmm. But I will do my best to make sure that even the poor patients, the patients in well, India and Pakistan, can get a chance to be cured. Well, you mentioned um, the Shriners, and you also mentioned, uh, or I didn't even mention the Shriners, you mentioned St. Jude. There are also programs like the Shriners hospital here in Chicago, the Medina Shriners, who do have hospitals for kids. I don't know if they deal with genetic diseases, but I know that, and they charge nothing. So there are institutions that do charge nothing um, for per parents, at least here in the United States. Uh, I know there's also uh, groups in the third world. Um, and I know that there's uh, groups in India that have descendancy from Syria and Iraq, so they may be carrying that Mediterranean genetic structure, including whatever is negative in the genetic structure, a disease, um, a disease element in there. Um, but are there other organizations that you're dealing with of a non-for-profit nature, or is it just your organization in St. Jude's right now? Yeah, no, I'm dealing with a lot of them. Um, the Italian Telethon basically just gave us half a million dollars for research to do in Italy mm -hmm. on their vector. Um, the John Broni Foundation in Italy has been responsible for work. And are, gonna, are these all people that you met acquaintances or that you've known, or how did you get linked up with them? Okay, um, uh, the telethon is Susan Agnelli, who there's a funny story about her, but I mean, we probably don't have a lot of time. But uh, I know Susan Agnelli since about uh, 2000. She's a wonderful lady, and she's the, the, the head of, you could call it, uh, the uh, madrina, the godmother of the Italian telethon. Um, and we just got a half a million from them. The John Baroni Foundation, who I knew the original uh, founder, his name was John Baroni, he was from a, a small town in Sicily, his son has the disease. As my son has the disease, the president is now Angela Iacono, who is an incredible woman with an, an incredible amount of courage. Um, and I've known her probably for eight years or nine years. They've actually invested probably close to $2 million. 
So, and it's not for profit as well. Right. And they're putting in a lot of money and obviously, you know, they have a lot of family members. You mentioned one of the, the owners of the foundation has a son. Um, so are they looking when this becomes open to the public, are they looking to get that first, you know, get all the help they can in Italy or is it going to happen in America first or is it just going to be everywhere it's going to be available? Yeah, I, uh, I guess that's a good question. Um, hmm. We'll start at Sloan Kettering. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be, be using John Tisdale, which is uh, NIH, and uh, Farid Boulad at Sloan Kettering, and they're both bone marrow, the head of bone marrow uh, <coughs> transplantation, NIH, and then, uh, or the head of their apartments, NIH and uh, Sloan Kettering. Um, and then quickly, uh, we'll be doing patients in Europe, Italy, and Greece. So they're going to have to st uh, set up like a wait list for this, or? You know, um, the company has nothing to do and I have mm -hmm. nothing to do with picking who the patients are. Basically, the uh, private investigators, or the, sorry, principal investigators, mm -hmm. oh, okay. they decide the patients, they, the criteria, et cetera. If you they're know. a good candidate for so, the So, yeah, I, I really, mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, I've gotten a, a couple of strange letters about these things, people trying to actually, uh, in Saudi Arabia, I got a kind of a letter kind of asking me, you know, if they could pay to get their son and all oh, that. You know? mm -hmm. And I basically said, look, you know, I have nothing to do, which is quite, which is true. Now, uh, so let's talk about your foundation. As you know, this is Cable Access Network, so mm -hmm. I cannot discuss or promote a for-profit. We can discuss the company but not promote it or ask people to sell. But Orphan's Hope is a non-for-profit yes. uh, foundation. So tell us what the foundation does and what we can promote here. We know you have a MySpace. We know you have music. We know you sell music. You make music, and the music is good music, and can it's I'll, music from the heart. Well, yeah, can you talk about your inspiration behind that too? Because there must be a lot of songs about you know your son and your family. Sure, and sure, sure. Uh, okay, the Orphan's Dream Found. Uh, first of all, I had a, a foundation called the Robin Hood Foundation in 1983 in Chicago, and it was an anonymous foundation. I would send kids to Florida. People's homes would burn, and we'd we'd uh, buy them furniture, and it was all anonymous. As a matter of fact, there was a time when the Chicago Tribune and the uh, Sun Times were sending people to the post office box, trying to see who was picking up the letters. But it was a way of me paying back <coughs> Chicago for for my luck, and for my good fortune. Um, we changed the Robin Hood Foundation into the Orphan's Dream Foundation now, uh, and the Orphan's Dream Foundation is dedicated to research in the orphan diseases thalassemia, principally sickle cell anemia, et cetera, but also for what we were talking about. The Orphan's Dream Foundation's goal is to make sure that people, even if they don't have the money, that they will eventually be able to be cured by the, the gene therapies. And the first, uh, the first CD <coughs> excuse me, is called Orphan Soul, and it kind of, I thought the way I found my soul through my son's orphan disease. Uh, the second one was Orphan Journey, and it's been an incredible journey. I mean. Uh, I've smuggled, <laughs> I've smuggled medicine into the United States illegally. I mean, yeah, I know we're on television, but I mean, it's it's a fact. I mean, there are some strange laws that we all, all over the world. Um, the problems that I've had with doctors, uh, problems that I've had with sick patients. We had two patients at my son's center die in 2005. So a lot of the inspirations from the song come from that. On this album, there's a beautiful song called Sandra, and it's about a 12-year-old girl who died of leukemia, actually. Um, so this is Orphan's Hope, and it coincides with the clinical trials, and we're already working on Orphan's Cure, um, and that will be out in 2010. Okay. And it's amazing. I mean, we sold over 2,400 downloads last month. Our best month, we made like $6,000. $6,000 I can pay for you know, one and a half researchers. It's and incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate everybody's prayers. I know a lot of the people, especially in Pakistan, India, et cetera, you know, a lot of these people just don't have the money. But sometimes, you know, they can go to the download and download, you know, one of the songs for 99 cents. A hundred percent of anything that we, that we receive goes all into the Orphan Dream Foundation. Even the CD is paid for a part. And it's orphansdreamfoundation.com, so yes. just so you go there and you can download it from right to uh, You can go website? to the... You can go actually to iTunes, Amazon. Okay. If you go to myspace.com slash Pat you can hear it's them the for easiest free. place. Okay. Yeah. You can hear them for free. You can download them. It also them. has a link, I think, where you can buy the music. Yes, cdbaby.com. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if somebody goes into Google and just Google Pat they'll be able to find the way. Again, in the end, uh, it, it, it's not even the money that people will pay for, and that's really very nice of them to do that. But you know what? If they can hear a song and say, geez, this is from a dad, you know, and I listen to that song 
for like uh, one day in uh, Jordan and Pew, we first did it in Italian, then we did it in English one more day. Now we're doing it in Chinese and we're doing it in mm -hmm. Spanish. And so, I mean, for me, if one parent, if one patient, if one cousin, brother, friend, lover, wife, whatever, hears a song and is kind of uplifted or kind of encouraged, I mean, for me, it, 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 it was worth making the album. And it takes about 18 months to make an album, but it was worth every, every minute of it. And we've been very lucky. Uh, Eros Ramazzotti, who I guess in America nobody knows, in South America they do. <laughs> but Eros Ramazzotti, his, his uh, choir uh, is on here, Antonella Pepe. I know. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, Umberto Tozzi, he gave his chiato, his guitar player. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, there's some incredible musicians on, on this. And, and, and in Italy, we did nine concerts this summer. And uh, during the concert, we talk about the, our, our mission, which is to now, cure since orphan This is disease. more of a United States and Chicago based show, although anybody can watch it on the internet, obviously in English, although we could do it in Spanish <laughs> if, if we'd like. Um, <coughs> you have also appeared at uh, Navy Pier. Sure. And other local Chicago Harris venues. Theater. Harris Theater. So you do come here and pay. Do you have any um, upcoming, upcoming shows? shows? Actually, we're uh, <laughs> trying to plan one for May, but it's not for sure at mm -hmm. House of Blues. House of Blues, a great venue. Yeah, yeah, it is. Any it is. summer f festivals at all? They'll right be now? in Italy. Oh, really? Yeah, we're back in Italy. We got like confirmed already 12 uh, concerts, which is, uh, yeah, it'll be a busy summer, a fun summer. Has music always been something that you've, you know, yeah, kind of Yes, I mean, I wrote my passion? first poem at six years old for my mother. It was called Drumbeat. I, I can still remember, you know, printing it out for her now, and I can remember the, the words for it. But um, I used to throw uh, uh, Christmas parties for the neighborhood at St. Lucie's. Uh, on uh, 30th and uh, Wells. Santa and, Lucia. Yeah, Santa Lucia. And I would sing, you know. I mean, that was the thing. I gave away the food and the gifts so everybody had to listen to me sing, <laughs> whether they liked it or not. And most people didn't throw anything, you know. They kind of put up with it. Um, over the years, you know, I always say when people say, well, you're a singer. And I say, well, yeah, but there's six billion singers on the planet. I'm not saying I'm a good singer for sure. I think the music is fantastic. I don't write all of the music. I, I collaborate with the music. But um, well, We were talking about before the show, just this kind of a, a, ver a side note, but uh, connected here nonetheless, about um, the, uh, the Oscars and how um, Grand Torino probably should have won an award. And God, I guess it, I, I I guess it, it didn't. And that was Clint Eastwood's, uh, I guess his claims his final movie. In the end, he sings. I don't particularly care for his voice, but he is a very talented jazz musician. I think the song's good. His piano playing's good. Great. He's a great composer. He, but his singing comes from the heart. His voice is not the best, but the singing comes from the heart, and he still has a great gift of music. No, oh, and you know what? And if if nothing else, that's another another thing. I'd love to inspire anybody because in the end, I say we're six billion people on the planet. We're six billion singers. I don't pretend to be a good singer. I don't pretend to be a good writer. But I, as you said, I, I sing from the heart, and uh, th that's a lucky thing. And I think it's a, it gives me a great stage presence. In Italy, it's incredible. Because a lot of the people, you know, I remember I used to go, I, I saw Dean Martin three times in my life. He was my favorite guy all the time. I liked him a lot better than Sinatra or anybody. But he always made you feel like he was your old Italian uncle up there. I mean, it's incredible. And I think I, I'm able to do that same kind of a thing. And in Italy, I mean, the concerts, but people just go crazy. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, you know, I always say it, you know, in the end, it's all about love. And I, I really feel that it's that way. Well, to our view audience, if you're not lucky enough to be in Italy this summer, uh, you're going to be all over Italy or just body? or uh, It'll be from Rome down. Rome I, down. I like to stay in Southern Italy. Have you gotten any okay. requests to go elsewhere? Or yes, Europe? actually Japan. Oh, really? Yes, J Japan we just actually recently. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, I'd love, I love to do it. Have it, you ever been out there? Uh, I haven't been east? to Japan. The furthest east I've been, I've been to Saudi Arabia. Okay. okay. That'd be interesting to have your shows out there, especially if you were... English and Italian, that'd be something new for them. Yeah, sure. well, I heard you can actually make money as like Sinatra impersonators in Japan. There's quite a big karaoke culture out there and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. without a doubt. It's always fun, though, because we had to bring my group from Italy to the United States this summer for, or in September for the <laughs> concerts. And oh, my gosh, when you're traveling around with troops, it's always very interesting. Well, now, we only got a couple minutes left. What I want to do again is for you to give your website, <coughs> uh, phone numbers, physical addresses, uh, internet addresses. Um, so first do that. Yeah. Uh, you can go to myspace.com slash Pat Girondi, P-A-T-G-I-R-O-N-D is in David, I. You can go to orphansdreamfoundation.com. But even if you Google Pat Girondi, G-I-R-O-N-D-I, you'll be able to find us. And, uh, you know... Uh, we are our brother's keeper. 
And you mentioned before all the proceeds and everything 100% goes directly 100%. to the research and treatment of the orphans diseases. 100%. Yeah, and that's it's amazing because a lot of the things that people do donate to, they don't realize a lot of the money actually isn't going there. Maybe only a small percentage of it is. Close to administration, right. or marketing, or paper. Yes, mm -hmm. it's 100%. And we're very careful. For example, uh, we received some big checks. We just received uh, $100,000 from the uh, Cooley's Anemia International. And Ron Capano <laughs> is a wonderful man. His son has thalassemia. But, you know, the, the check went to City of Hope. You know, I mean... Um, we're, we're very careful. I'm the CEO of the company. I've never gotten a dime. I don't intend to ever take a salary. Uh, I'm leaving for New York. I stay at the Pod Hotel on 51st between 2nd and 3rd. Um, in the room, I don't have a bathroom. There's four lights above the door. It costs <laughs> so it's like not like you're staying at the penthouse suite. <laughs> right. And, you know, I, my, I was by my sister's house last night for the Super Bowl, and she goes, well, you do that because you're cheap. I said, no, no. <laughs> if I could save $200 a night, I'm in, I'm in New, York, New York 40 days a year. That's eight grand that more that I can put into research. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that, that's kind of how our company, I, I, I believe that we're very professional. Well, in our last couple of minutes, tell us a little bit about you as a CEO, kind of the, I mean, you're like the gorilla CEO. It's just mm -hmm. like guerrilla warfare. You're out there on a budget uh, doing something good. Tell us about your role as a CEO. Yeah. Um, first, I was the CEO because no one would do it for free. That's the truth. When we started, when we uh, took over the project from Sloan Kettering 2003, 2004, I looked to hire a CEO. And uh, the prices were from 250 and up. And mm -hmm. of course, they wanted uh, pieces of the company, et cetera, which wasn't a problem, but I didn't have the 250. Right. Well, we're, I hate to break you right now, but um, we're glad you're in charge and we're glad you're going to the conference February 5th where hopefully a lot will get done there. And I just want to mention and show the CD here one more time, Orphan, Orphan's Hope. And if you go to his website, Patriani or myspace.com slash Patriani, you can get these songs here. And I highly recommend you do. And you could hear it in the intro we heard. Which song was that in the intro? Uh, Living Without You. In the outro, we'll hear another song of yours. Fire in the show. Great. So everyone, please uh, look into this organization. It's a good thing. And Pat, we'd like to thank you for coming on again. Appreciate it. Frank, thanks for having me and everyone out there. Good night, God bless, take care. Was it you I saw there on Fifth Avenue? Like the cat that ate the bird Like an agent from the Internal Revenue Instilling fear without a word I run into myself and hide away The child you claim I was, there are no helplines to render aid. For grown men, you know that there are no helplines to save the souls from an eaters like your kind who scream fire in the show. Your mascara running on Fifth Avenue, confusing daytime with the night.